let's go back to the arcade and stay tuned to find out what this bit does. And at number five in the countdown is <laughs> Kung Fu Master. When I used to live as a kid, uh, so it was almost like an L shape. My sister street was here, there was a chippy here, and I lived sort of just up the road there. And uh, they used to have a, a video wizard for the creation of this arcade machine. And they'd uh, rent jammer boards, and so every few months the game would change. But when they had Kung Fu Master, I got properly addicted to it, and I used to always just be nipping at my sister's house, uh, saying, Oh, can I have a pound, can I have a pound? Because I was very crap on this game, so I always uh, had to keep giving my sister's house. But uh, I'll quick go and um, show you what it's like. I didn't click in until years later, I don't know how I didn't. But it's basically the film Game of Death. He ripped off, and it's basically this. You, you know, you'd have to go up in different levels of code it, what Bruce Lee did in the film. It's got like Kareem Abdul Jabbar in. Uh, it's really good because you can like do kicks and punches, and you get more points for the, uh, the kicks. If you if you like really want to like sort of um, act hard, like the, the guys that throw knives, if you go right up to him, you, you get about 800 points if um, you punch him in the face like that, but it's a bit uh, dangerous, really. I'm just doing this just to show you, but one thing I think was really good about arcades is they would do certain things to like make you play, like you know, to get you into the game. And this bad guy here, if I, like if I let him kill me, and I'm doing it on purpose, I'm not just going to shit on this game, but uh, he'll laugh, like just, just really sort of cast a ha 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 laugh. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, so, don't even know. And like if you had that as a kid, you'd be like, oh, I'll show you. Before, get off your horse and play your video game. <laughs> this is Bank Panic, great Western arcade game. It might not translate very well, like, it might not look like a boring game, but I'll try my best to sort of show you how good it is. Basically, you use these three buttons, you work in a bank, and you can scroll to different doors in the bank. And there's always three doors on the screen, and these three, uh, buttons represent the doors on the game. It might be easy just to start it off really. And I don't know what kind of bank you're working in where you've got your gun ready as soon as people come to the door. It's obviously some kind of Charles Bronson type neighborhood where uh, you have to have uh, this kind of action going on. But we'll start the game. These are the different uh, the, the different levels of the game. Oh, there we go, starting level one. That's me, I am the uh, good guy in white there. And you've got all these numbers here, these are all the numbers of the doors. And you see these little, the, where, yeah, if I go to like door four, that I can see somebody's coming to the door. So there'll be somebody here in a second. And I can use that, like there's just dropping off money. But it gets really addictive because sometimes, like there, this, ah, you got me. But you, when somebody's gonna draw the guns, if you shoot them first, you get an unfair rating. So you have to try and, be a good kind of cool cowboy and not just blow people away as they sort of come in. I'll just do a quick game just for sort of show how it works. Like there's someone here, like there, they're just dropping off money. There, I got shot there. I shot all the hats off that kid. So they sort of give me a bonus there. Like I say, it probably doesn't translate on screen, but it's really taxing on you. Oh, unfair, I've shot him before he drew, drew first blood. Uh, oh, I've done it again. There, so I can ask lady, she, you know, just dropping money off and that. And at number three, you're all gonna die! It's Friday the 13th, the video game. No, I'm just kidding, Splatter House. What blew me away about this game, though, I remember there was an independent computer shop in the town up the road, and on the first floor, it was just like a normal shop, but then upstairs, they had video games. And because there was no windows, or they'd put posters and blacked them all out. So the, the room where the arcade came from was really dark. It was all lit up by like the marquees and the screens on the arcade. But they had Splatter House. And I was a big Friday 13th fan, like, you know, from like the mid 80s. Like, you know, I was allowed to watch Friday 13th from when I pulled it to bed. But when I first saw this game, I was like, oh my god, they made a Jason game. And, you know, oh, well, that's great. The intro of this is like the second soon of Thunder and Light, and I was like, I'm horror and stuff. But when I very first saw this, and I don't know if later versions I'm completely, completely uh, liable to slander here, but I'm sure they had to change uh, the look of the main character in Splatter because. Anytime I see this game, I just think, this is a Jason game. You know, they've got the overalls, the hockey mask. And then you see later versions, and they kind of just change the look, the colour of the mask is. 
is different and uh, you know it doesn't just uh, not that, not that big meat cleaver there I mean, I, I know there is a Friday the 13th game coming out next year, and I know there's been a couple of attempts to do a Friday the 13th game, but I can't really believe there hasn't been a proper, many proper Jason games. When you think there's been 12 movies, the, you know, the making another one, there's been a Friday the 13th TV series, I mean, and there's only been a couple of, you know, I enjoyed them, but there's only been a couple of far fast attempts at Jason games, it's ridiculous really, not particularly very good on this game. Uh, it, like I say, when I realised um, yeah, it wasn't really Jason, I don't think I played it as much as I uh, probably should have done, but yeah, number three, Splatterhouse. At the start of this video, I said, what is this? And well, now I'm going to let you know. It's a JAMA board, which stands for Japanese Amusement Machine Manufacturers Association, or something like that. It's basically a, a game. Uh, it's what the uh, sort of game. Uh, not all manufacturers did this, but a lot of games were in this format. Basically, all the game information is on these chips, and it slots into the back of the arcade machine. And so, basically, if you hunters were going uh, bored of an arcade game, you could literally just take the board out and put another board in. I feel like this should be in like a glass case or something. So, if anybody ever looks at it, they go, "What's that?" And you go, "Oh, something." basically the heart of an arcade machine you know so it's pretty cool uh, Archer think that like all the information there on all these chips and all the soldering if you look at one JPEG image on the internet and it's probably way more information that's on all those chips but there it is a jammer board and back to the countdown and number two <laughs> it's Outrun apparently the guy that created Outrun and um, Saw Cannonball Run, which makes Cannonball Run is responsible for so many cool things, like Jackie Chan using outtakes at the end of his films. But apparently, the guy who created out and saw Cannonball Run, and he gave him the idea for doing this arcade game. It's so simplistic thinking about it, it's like that million dollar formula of how it goes through different scenarios, like cloudy and sunny and nighttime and things like that. And this was so amazing in a day that, you know, just being able to pick, the, you know, pick your song. But this just as much as I love this in uh, this kind of style of arcade cabinet, it just does not do it justice at all. Like I know everything's amplified when you're a kid. I mean, literally, it had the great speakers. The cabinets were hydraulic. It had a steering wheel. You could even add it. It had like, a gear stick. It had a brake pedal, like accelerator pedal. And you know, now looking at it, it's obviously dated a little bit. But at the time, it was so iconic. It's amazing now to think that like. Some new arcades have got Outrun 2 in it, and Outrun 2 is amazing and uh, really good. There's some like little things in this game though that really are funny, that like the fact that it's a convertible Ferrari Testarossi, and it's like, you know, there's never a convertible Ferrari Testarossi, and the, you know, the fact that it's a Ferrari that everybody hates, but I love because it's in Outrun. And then what's, you know, like, you know, looking, you know, you don't think about stuff like this when you're a kid, but the fact like, if you crash the car, like the woman tells you off, and it's like, you know, my first family streak is too many you know, it's just like, you know, I was just insulted as you know, it's like, it's so crazy. Oh, no, it was, I don't want to see it. no, oh, we've got 10 seconds, come on. Oh yeah, if you go left as well, at every uh, fork in the road, it's actually easier. No, I'm going to get to the junction. I say, if you can see this in the proper cabinet, it's a lot better. Number one, King of the Arcades, greatest of all time, Star Wars. Well, in my opinion, anyway. Big Star Wars fan, I guess that's not really very original. A lot of kids in the 70s and 80s were, but love Star Wars, still love it now. Can't wait for the new film to come out. But playing this arcade machine as a kid, I mean, you know, you sat down in the great cabinet, it had the really cool controller that they used in Party Fox as well. And they also used it in the Empire Strikes Back game. But it kind of shows you you can ruin a controller, really, because that the little wicked cool controller, the yoke thing, the Atari designed, worked so well with this game, but on Return of the Jedi it was so weird and didn't just work at all. But playing this game as a kid, it was just like just being in the film. There wasn't really very many 3D games and the ones that the that the watched just weren't very good. But being in this Star Wars environment, having the speakers with the samples from the film coming on, the music, you know, like just uh, good just to show you what it was like. Here we go. It's, it, 
Like I say, it doesn't translate very well at all on this because the other control was just so much better. Like, imagine that music just, just blasting out the speakers, it was so good. Red 5 going in. That's so cool, even all these years later. If you want Kenobi sample. Just like Beggars Canyon back home. It really does just take you back playing this game. If you've got uh, Rogue Squadron on GameCube, there's a cheap way you can sort of play arcade perfect versions of this in Empire Strikes Back. It's really awesome. Here we go. Did I do it? Ah. Smartest man alive. Here we go. See you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, that'd be really cool. If uh, you want to leave a comment, you'll get a guaranteed reply off me. Bonus points if you can figure out what this game is. Anybody uh, leave in the comments, that'd be good. And if you subscribe, all your dreams will come true. Oh, but not video game tips, unfortunately. See you later, everybody. Catch you next time.